download anything you just can log in on the browser the only purpose the reason why i'm asking you to join i think mr ana yeah yes chetan yes chetan carry on yeah so i was saying that uh, the reason why we are saying that you should join microsoft teams because first of all it does not require any download you can log in from uh, you can join from a browser and second that you can ask questions we will not be able to uh, you know take questions on the youtube because we are all sitting over here and it's just a mirror uh, telecast which is going on uh, youtube so we will not be able to take uh, questions yes if the if the bandwidth of the all the members have gets exhausted over here that is around close to 400 for members to join in to uh, from uh, from the youtube so please those who have joined from the youtube come over here and uh, let's have it let's have a session over here itself ma'am padmavati ma'am if you are uh, there uh, with your permission can we start the session uh, since it over for yes ma'am yes ma'am I, I was just waiting for your only, go. There are only seventy members over yeah. here. Yeah, we'll wait for a while. But I was just uh, looking for her. So, ma'am is no. there. So, ma'am, yeah. uh, considering that uh, we were uh, expecting around hundred fifty, two hundred or hundred fifty plus, so uh, people are still joining in. So, shall we wait for five minutes? Few members, as we can see over there, or oh. uh, hardly any, around four, five, or something like that. Not many so have I joined. with the uh, data coverage etc and by 4:15 i mean mostly the senior students obviously they know the data coverage and all so they can straight away you know uh, uh, you know view the session while uh, the main session starts at that time okay. So someone had a question in the chat that what is this uh, session is all about? The session is about talking about what is legal research, then talking about the importance of legal research, and then finally jumping on to the last section of the session that will be how to do legal research and through SEC online. So we'll talk about those things. So is this class being recorded? Uh well uh vaishnavi i think uh, you asked this query of uh, question of uh, recording as such we are not recording the session but yes you will get uh, uh, i will show you the links or the resources with which you can access uh, most of the options the basic options as well as the most of the options uh, tools that are uh, there in the scc online and uh, you'll be able to access through uh, the youtube channel our youtube channel the links are there and we'll show you how to approach them Okay, so we have around eighteen members um, 
viewing this telecast on YouTube right now. And um, we have, I think, a good number of people oh, already sir? joined in. I'm How seven, many members, sir? I'm uh, 19 right now on YouTube and uh, 79 uh, over here on, the, on this platform. So on our approximately 98, 99 members have already joined it. Okay, sir. And anyways, uh, the, as for the session uh, recording, uh, you were saying, uh, Mr. Raina has said, uh, given the answer, we already have recording. And also the YouTube link uh, that is uh, being shared that link will act as a as a recording for you. So you can use, if you click on that link, even after the training gets over, the session gets over, it will replay uh, on the same uh, link. Okay, sir. Um, In the meantime, what we can do, we're waiting for, you know, considering the fact that 4.15 is, uh, is what we are expecting to start the session. Yes, sir. It started now. 4.10 okay. is over. Right. Okay. I just wanted to ask a, a quick question to everyone. First thing first, uh, uh, those of you who are, who are joining from YouTube, please understand the fact that there is there will be a delay of, I think, a minute or two. What I say right now, You'll be listening to that after uh, there will be a delay of a uh, few seconds. So please, uh, Adair, you know, please keep that in mind. And uh, second, uh, which is a more important question rather than a statement, is considering the fact that I read a few of the chats over here, I think some of you do not know why you are why you have joined this session. Now, as I've given you a heads up on what is the purpose of today's session, why are we joining in the, the session? I would like to ask, you know, all of you over here, that what is it that you expect to learn from this session? Now, it can be that I have no idea about legal research. And that is something what you're looking for. Or it can also be that I have used legal research software, I have used uh, Supreme Court India website, I've used India Kanun, I've used, um, you know, Advocate Number One, all those uh, free websites. And uh, I need to understand why I should use a paid research tool. Or someone, uh, because uh, I have been told that there are a few LLM students will also be joining in. You can also have advanced queries or expectations from this session, like when I'm doing a legal research on the SEC online software, can I also see a, where a particular case was cited as a precedent? And if you want to be really specific, I you want to see if I can figure it out while doing my research, that if I'm looking at a case where all has been distinguished rather than saying that where at all has been cited. Now, those of you who are, you know, in the first year must be wondering what is distinguished, what is uh, the cited. See a case, you call it a case, you call it a judgment, but then you also call them a precedence. Now, precedence, I'm sure everyone understands the meaning of precedence. But just to bring everyone on the same page, prisons are you are you have two ways to fight a case, right? One is going as per the statutes. So whatever that is written from A to Z in all the 18, 1900 central acts, then uh, equally equal number of state acts, you go as per the book, which means whatever that is written over there, you comprehend it and then you fight your case. But then there will be certain things which are not written in the in the in the in the book of law. What do you do in those cases? In those cases, you fight your case with your wisdom, with your experience, and whatever you know you know from that particular area. If it's something uh, you know, like say it's a technical or something related to environment, 
you start building up your arguments with with the support of secondary materials now secondary materials can be you know some articles can be some research papers or whatever there's another way of fighting a case in such scenario is to look for you already seen that there's nothing the law is silent on that part and i'll give you an example to help you understand after i uh, done with this uh, the statement you would like to see if the similar judgment or similar discussion that took place in the past I mean to say if some judgment or some judges in the courtroom had had a similar discussion in the past and why are you looking for those because if that happens and the verdict that came out and it's in your favor you would same use the same judgment in your current arguments in the current case and why is that thanks to article 141 of the constitution of india because the law declared by the supreme court is binding on all the uh, courts within the territory of india so that brings me to the second part of this uh, detail uh, this statement you have two kinds of law one is a statute law which is based on the statutes the bare acts uh, the central act state acts and all and the other one is the case law now case law and statute law what does it this difference between the two statute law i've already explained what is case law case law or like i prefer calling it as a judge made law it's a law which has been made by the court now let me give you an example to help you understand this in a better way we all uh, remember this movie uh, pk yeah yes <clears throat> and uh, there was a lot of hue and cry about the, when the movie you know went to the theaters and that was that this movie is hurting the religious sentiments of people and uh, because of which in lot of states you know uh, people protested outside the theaters not like a silent protest but it really got violent and i don't want to get into it which state was that and all stuff you all know it now the question comes in there is nothing in the statute as such written that if a movie is made in such and such manner you should take it off yeah there is something written in the in the context of that yes you know nothing should be made which uh, provokes anyone's uh, you know provoke someone or their heads hurt the the sentiments of uh, of any sect of people that is written over there but you just can't say the oh, just because someone is complaining and there's something on that you just take it off so in simple words there's nothing written clearly on this lines so what was the what was the solution to this i will not talk about other states i am in delhi right now so i'll talk about what happened in delhi the court the case went to the high court and justice n law who was still serving as a lordship in delhi high court was the one who was assigned this case and justice n law um, as far as i uh, know him as a person he's a very sought after and you know very calm and composed person and i think most of judges are like that so my lordship said you know we're not going to just you know trash away this whatever money that they have put into this just because uh, for the likes of some people the only solution that i feel is right is we have to watch the movie and then only we can come to a conclusion that if it's you know should be let go or should be you know put on the theaters or the cinema halls so they had a, a private uh, premiere in the courtroom the movie was played in the courtroom everyone sat down watched the movie and uh, you know these these are like incentives of being an advocate or being a judge right you see the movie before anyone else right so jokes apart after watching the movie uh, i'll just uh, you know just excuse just share the what he said in 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 a concise uh, way this is all just i'll simply say that this movie is a satire 
is a plain satire however if something is you know relates to you and he was talking about you in in respect to the you know the, all the this religious gurus and everyone that if anyone anything what is being shown over here and you can relate to that then you better mend your ways okay and uh, udota please mute your mic so the conclusion was that it's just a satire and it's nothing which is affecting uh, uh, you know which is hurting the religious sentiment it's a reality if you're saying it's a reality then you should stop doing these things and what was the movie all about it was religious gurus manipulating people saying that you do this you do that and you'll get this you'll get that you know you have to go to the temple on your knees to go through your go through pain and then only the god would be god will uh, will be happy or you have to give some donations to you know uh, to the all these temples and all because that's how you know the god will listen to you so all these malpractices were being you know being adopted for a long long time and which is not right right so he simply said in a different way that yes what they're showing is is actually hurting your sentiments but what you're doing is not right so i'm going to let this movie go and run on the cinema theaters the reason i took almost 5 7 minutes to explain this example is because this is going to be the base for our today's session legal research is not fighting a case and legal research is not about you going to the court and you are smart you are nlu graduate and you just you know you are you know or you are a big shot uh, university graduate and you you smart you good looking you have a good hold of uh, you know on the language and you go and you argue and the, and the person would be like the judge would be like oh yeah yeah please please go take the case i am not going to ask anything no it doesn't happen like that you cannot intimidate the court in any manner you can only remember one thing you have to remember one thing that you are you are the officers of the court you are there to assess the court and not to tell the court what to do and that can only be done when you have done your proper homework and that homework we are talking about is the legal research <clears throat> excuse me so that's a legal research right now just to give you a number we started uh, there are four principal high courts we all aware of it bombay madras calcutta and uh, allahabad we started in the year 1861 and 1864 respectively so it's been so many years the judgments are coming uh, from these four, four principal high courts you can do the maths and even if they are were you know like deciding let's be more you know let's be more lenient on this even let's say two judgments in a week you can do the multiplication and you understand what is the number of quantum of information that they have in these courts and then apart from that 1950 supreme court came into existence then by 1960 65 lot of uh, high courts uh, were functional for almost all these states and uh, now if you the do the malvin 25 high courts one supreme court then several district courts then several uh, you know tribunals judgments coming over here the information that we are talking about is running into few crores of pages not actually not pages but few crores of judgments which you will be accessing right now going through books will uh, not make to the cut you need something which is more robust and you have to do it through the with the help of the technology and that's why we are all here in today's session okay anyone has now any question any expectation you know why why once we have gone through the entire detailing of why we are here anyone wants to say anything or want to let us know that what are they expecting from the session this would be a good time So you can raise your hand, and we will listen to you, and then we'll go accordingly with the session. Anyone?
Okay, so we are assuming that everyone is uh, open uh, with this idea that we'll uh, tell you everything about how the legal research happens, and then once you learn with it, so learn from the, this uh, session, you please raise your question in this session. Make a note of those questions and ask. If something is, uh, let me let me explain how the session gonna go. Um, I'll be taking this session. My name is Chetan Singh Gill. I have with my uh, my colleague, Mr. Rajesh Raina. Mr. Sanjeev Chaudhary and Mr. Sanjay Kapoor. Together as a team, we'll be taking this session forward. And then uh, while you're detailing, if something is relevant to what has been shown on the screen or what has been detail, uh, what has been uh, detailed on the screen right now at that point of time, I would request to raise your hand and then we can call out your name and you can ask the question which is related to that topic that we're discussing. If you have something which is not being talked on the screen as, as of now uh, at, that, at that particular moment, I would request you wait for the, the right moment when we're talking about that example, or we'll take it in the last, uh, the next section of this session, that is first the detailing, and then we'll do a question answer round for everyone. Okay, so that's how we're going to go about it. So welcome everyone. Uh, now we're going to get into the legal research software, and before we start, I would like to show you what all databases can you access? When I said one crore uh, judgments. That was only Indian. But do we all? I think we also need to understand that now things have changed. Indian database is not enough. Sometimes you have to also look for some other countries, and there are so many countries. So you have to look for all those other uh, country judgments, and sometimes also in the international courts. Mr. Raina, would you uh, yes. please yeah. uh, share yeah. your? Uh, screen and could you please help me understand if we have myloft and uh, platinum plus over here yes 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 we have platinum plus and uh, myloft uh, as a trial as well yes very good so there's gonna be a lot of things that we'll be sharing in this session today so so first question guys before we get into the data coverage is how can we this mr i'm gonna mute your mic i think there's some uh, Thank you. So, the first question is not how can we uh, do the legal research. The first question right now is how can we access this database? On the campus, we all uh, you know logging in from the, our respective places, accessing it through a remote access software is the first question to be answered. Now for that, you can see Mr. Rana is showing a screen to you. This is a, uh, is a mailbox. <coughs> Sorry. Now in this mailbox, he's shown, a, shown you a email which says, Dear Mr. Rajesh Raina, and this email has been uh, sent from uh, no reply at the rate myloft.xyz. So you need to look for this sender. Okay, no reply at myloft.xyz. And then you scroll down. Please scroll down. The email will look like this, and it'll say either it'll say set your password, or it'll say reset your password. Whatever comes your way, you know. If you say forget your password, click over there. If you say reset your password, you can click over here. Right. Once you click on this, this email is very important. So once you click on this, it'll take you to a different screen. Um, it will take you to a different screen. And it will tell you that. Sorry. OK, just a minute. I think I'm having an echo because of my other laptop of, of this. Just a moment. OK, so I was saying that uh, before we even, uh, you know, once we click on the set password, you will come to this particular screen and you'll say, you know, set your password. You can set your password, there will be certain criteria. And also, everyone can do that. Once you do that, it will take you to the next screen that is select your institute. So, you select your institute right now. Do not search for ICFI. Eventually, we'll let you know when to search for your institute name. Right now, this is given as a trial. So, on trials, we don't uh, write the university name over here, we don't add it. So, for now, you need to search for SCC online as your institute. Okay. We do that and we click on continue.
your email id would be the email id on which that you have received an email <clears throat> sorry and then your password that you just made the password so you put those password and click on sign in now once you sign in this is all happening on the browser right now it will come and know because you're doing it for the first time you'll be opening myla for the first time you will have this you know uh, written on the top a uh, message uh, on the pairing on the top it says add extension so you need to click on add extension to enable the myloft work to happen it's a vpn service so you need to have this uh, extension add to chrome and uh, that's about it it'll re uh, reroute you to the redirect you to the same page now you click on the resources you click on databases which is a sub option uh, under that resources and you'll have scc online click over here it'll open scc online into a different tab or a window depending on the setting that you have in your computer you come over here and then you click on login when you click on login it will give you two options a user login and an ip login you need to go for ip login all the time if ip login doesn't really appear over here that means you have missed out the step of my log and in ip login you click on uh, you click on this uh, entry which says what is your login id so what is your login id your email id is your login id so official id you input it over here and there can be a situation that uh, you're coming using the my log for the first time so when you put in your id over here it might just say the login id is not registered how you can see on the screen right now so do not panic there is nothing to worry about there is nothing to reach out to anyone you can do it yourself and uh, how can you do that you can uh, just below the option of login now there is an option of register here you click on register here and you write your login id whatever login id is whatever your full name is you do it right over there and you're done about it okay we can take one uh, example if someone wants it and uh, we can do that over here but in case uh, people understand what we're talking about is this is good enough so next time you come once you registered you come over here you put in your login id which you are mr anwar going to do right now and click on sign in that is login now and you will get access to scc online on the first place right <coughs> i'm sorry now when you come to this particular screen there are there's a colorful like mr raina like to put it it's a colorful dashboard colorful menu so it has research plus which is a blue color tiles then you have my library which is red color tiles and then you have links to other softwares that we have are kept over there now before we jump into how to do research and everything let me make you you know make the difference between what is a blue tile means and what is a red tile when the red tile needs to be used a blue tile needs to be used when you have something to give to the software that means you have a party name you have a citation you have a section number or a particular word then you come to research plus then you would have my library my library it is like your like a name suggests it's a library so you have areas which are defined you have sections which are defined in the library similar thing has been made available over here you want to see the articles you go to articles you want to see you know uh, the treaties you go over there you want to see the acts you click on that area and only that particular information will be poured in front of you but then the main question comes in what are we searching in this is a user interface this is the front end what is the back end what all information do we have in this software and for that mr raina uh, could you please go to the website one more time the landing page of scc online there we are data coverage and web edition and you can see the screen please scroll down further mr raina before clicking on the download you can see over here the entire description of where from supreme court from which area to from which state to which period federal court privy council from which period high court from which period everything is written over here so you can go through it as per your you know time then you have with you as per your leisure time i'm going to click on the download pdf because it's concise it's easier to go for it so we're going to go through this mr raina you can close the left side panel it'll be easier we'll click on the th three dots the three dot on the left hand side yep good so it says we have around 430 databases 
4.4 million, that is 44 lakh documents. And then it gives you Indian case law, which consists of Supreme Court judgments, high courts, and tribunals. Then, apart from uh, then few district court judgments as well. Then, talking about before independence data, we give you access to Privy Council, Federal Court, and Historical Courts data, which is coming from Indian appeals and Moorish Indian appeals from 1836 till 1949. Okay, so you have the historical data of Privy Council as far as India is concerned. Then you go further down, you'll see tribunal list, which is uh, starting on the left side uh, column and then spilling over on the next uh, on the side uh, side screen or the side on the next uh, other side of this uh, document. So you can see Copyright Board Act, Debt Recovery Tribunal, and then Appellate, ART, DSAT, APTL, all those would be coming over here. DRT, NGT, NCLT, all are coming over here. And then and you have statutory, statutory law that gives you access to the central acts, state acts, rules and regulations, circulars, notifications, instructions, bills in parliaments as passed by one of the houses or as introduced in one of the houses. And then apart from that, you have secondary materials. And what are secondary materials? Which aids or which supports the primary source of law in the, you know, in its development. So research part, like the Law Commission of India report, it is submitted in the court as a report, but then gets converted into a bill. It converts into a draft and then into a bill. And then once you get the assent from the president or, uh, or the governor, depending on um, you know, is it a state law or a, a central act, that gets converted into an act itself or amendment comes into play. So all these uh, secondary materials are also available, which have your constitutional assembly debates, which is the backbone of the constitution of India. Various reports or commission committees, legal articles, 62 top journals uh, available over here. Then mood court resources. In case you want to see, you know, in which mood court, what was the problem, what was the how, what uh, if you want to see the winning team memo, look how it looks like. You can see that we've been sponsoring a lot of mood courts from past one decade, so we'll get you all the information over there. Now this is only Indian database. With, uh, Mr. Anna, please scroll down. Apart from this, we have the throw of information coming from other areas, that is from other countries. So UK from 1865 till date is available over here. Then other countries like US, West Africa, South Africa, all the neighboring countries, Malaysia, you know, Pakistan, then Sri Lanka and all, then all the SAR countries will come over here and you get the information from there. Those countries, uh, acts, bear acts are also available. So this is not really exhaustive, but yes, there's still something to start your search with. And then you also have something uh, which might uh, come in handy for you when you're doing research, and that is your international courts. Mr. Anna, please scroll up. There's a list of international courts. So those of you who do not understand what are international courts, so international courts are set up in various countries, and those are they do not really take care of inter or not only internal matters of their country, but also Sometimes some some of the courts take care of issues which are at the world level, as I said, which are affecting the world, and uh, which means that if there's a conflict between two countries, sometimes these courts come into play. Like ICJ is one of one of that. ICJ and the Criminal Court of Justice are the two ones which uh, takes care of those kind of things. But then there are uh, commissions or there are courts like Human Rights Commission and the Caribbean Court of Justice and others which are talking about, you know, the issues at the, at the at a global level. So these codes are also available so you can have a look at those and get the information going. You must be, I hear you ask that, Chetan, why would we need other countries' information, other countries' judgments or other international uh, court judgments? You know, if you're thinking that Indian, because you're practicing in India, so Indian case law is good enough for you, you're living in a bubble and this will burst and it might burst at the very wrong time. We all need to understand that there are certain topics which are not developed in India and there are certain topics which are well developed in other 
develop, uh, in other developed countries. So something which is not developed in your country, and uh, which means that there is nothing on the statute law as well, much to talk about. That's why there is not enough uh, judgments on it. It's always better to take the inference from other jurisdiction, which is beyond your country. See how they're doing. See how the arguments are happening. See how that how that that law is being developed, and bring that over here. And you'll be surprised. Those of you who don't know this, but you'll be surprised that nowadays people are citing UK judgment. People are citing other countries' judgment in India, and vice versa. Indian judgments are being cited, I think, across the world. Guinea, Mauritius, Singapore. UK for that matter, US for that matter. I think everywhere I've seen so many judgments being cited, Indian judgment being cited in other, you know, overseas courts. So this is all the database that we have. Let's get into the software bit. Let's start with the most uh, simplest search of all. That is word search. Considering the fact that uh, I have uh, the first sem uh, students over here, I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm not going to bombard you with a lot of uh, searches or advanced searches. But if, uh, because I don't see a lot of members joining from the, on the YouTube, and I was told that the LM student would be joining from the YouTube. So I'm not gonna be focusing this session for the, for only for a single digit number member over there. But if you have a question which is more advanced and you want me to do that, please voice it out and I'll take it from there. And now you can also uh, put your question in the chat or oh, on the YouTube because I have I'm on the iPad and I can see to you know see your comments over there. So let's have this simple search. Do not put your learnings that you have done at uh, in uh, on Google. That means writing everything over there, calling out each and every sentence word of a sentence. That doesn't work. How, that doesn't how the legal research works in legal research softwares. You don't have to write that I'm looking for judgment on section 420 of IPC from Supreme Court of India 2021 judgments. That's not the way of doing it. Search over here. You do that because in Google you have to mention that there's so much of information that are kept on Google, and you have to tell Google, uh, you know. This uh, Google AI or research uh, platform that you, you are a lawyer and you want information only from that particular segment. When you come to this, you come to this kind of software like SEC for that matter, it's already understood that you're looking for only information related to the legal fraternity. So, what do you do? You're looking for, let's forget about section numbers. Let's start from the very simple word. We all understand the word, the meaning of corruption. I'm sure you are with me. We are not a big fan of corruption. And, uh, but it is there at a lot of levels from right from that micro to macro level. Everyone knows that there's something going on and uh, the corruption still exists in India. So when you want, if you want to see judgments, later judgment on corruption, and I'm saying it, uh, the reason I'm giving this example because uh, recently, I visited the, the Lokpal, uh, Delhi Lokpal office. And you, as you understand, the Lokpal, major uh, role of Lokpal is to take care of these kind of corrupt, corrupt uh, government officers and, uh, you know, bring in, uh, bring justice for the, for the citizen. And this was a query that they want to see that, you know, we have decided on latest judgment. Uh, I think it was month of uh, August. And they wanted to see their judgment if they were published or not. And they did not give me any party name. They did not give me anything. They said it's a corruption case. So don't write everything. Mr. Ayana, just write the word corruption over here. And start search. The problem is not that the legal search is very complicated. Legal search is very simple. I've been doing it for past 10 plus years now. And uh, I think there's not even a single day I've not done a research. The only thing that is it difficult is to comprehend your query and find the right words and choose the right words to formulate 
that search query. In a normal world, what we have written, you would have written everything, Supreme Court judgment, or Supreme Court of India judgment on corruption or the latest or whatever. That would have not given you the desired results, but have given you some extra results. Sorry, you know, results which are not even relevant to you. Now let's see this. It says we got digest notes. What are digest notes? The head notes, ratio of the case. Then you have judgments, acts, bills, rules, legal and business news, notification, articles. Everything has been searched together. Whatever that we dealt, whatever we talked about in the data coverage, everything has been made available right over here. So good enough. But what are we looking for? We're looking for Supreme Court of India judgment. Mr. Raina, uh, would you like to do the honors and just say only, uh, just say judgments plus sign? Frankly, no judgment plus sign is a Supreme Court, Federal Court, Privy Council, High Court, District Courts, Foreign Cases, International Court, Tribunals, everything has been searched. Now, depending on what you're looking for, you can search for one, you can select one court. And let's take, let's take, we are talking about Supreme Court. So I take my cursor in front of Supreme Court and I click on this uh, option of only. Now what happened? We have now deselected the entire database and we are only getting Supreme Court of India judgments in front of us. Good enough. But uh, it is the latest judgment on the top. Not really. I want the latest one. How can I get the latest one? There's an option of sort by like you use Excel or any other you know online websites. There's a sorting option. There's a sorting option over, available over here as well. You click on this and then you go for chronological latest first. So you have 9th of September. They were looking for this. I'm sorry. They were looking for 3rd of August, if I'm correct. The last time I went over there, but that, that would be like down below now. Considering the fact they're low, there are more judgments on the top. But now within, I think less than what? Less than two minutes. If you go in one flow, in less than one minute or two minute, you will get the later judgment on any topic like this. Let it be arbitration. Let it be defamation. Let it be cor corruption, murder, dowry, death, anything. Write one word and you're good to go with the search. OK, simple enough. Now let's talk about the second part of it. Do not leave the screen. Let me let's stay on the same screen. Why? You know, uh, research is done. You got the results and the results are around 2200 only from Supreme Court. It's still a big number for me to, you know, go through, go through all these judgments and then come to my uh, you know search that I would like to do. And for that I need to go through all these 2000 judgments. I have to read these judgments. These judgments can be of one page, can be of 100 pages as well. Can I get some help from the from SEC online? Certainly you can and you can get a help from the editorial members. I don't work on the head notes because I'm not I'm not an expert on that. But then I have a entire team like an army of editorial members who are gold medalists who are from the big top schools and who've been working with us for almost you know i think the average time that uh, the editorial member has been uh, with us is 10 plus years and what they do is they read the all the judgments for you and they make head notes now what are the head notes a judgment uh, when you look at the judgment from the you know from a far distance what do you do you just label it Oh, this is a murder case. Oh, this is a corruption case. This is an abduction case. This is a, a terrorist attack case. But is that correct? Is that the way you should put it? Not really. Because when you're looking at a case, let's take an example of a terrorist attack case. Let's take a Kasab case or Mumbai blast case. We all call this case as a terrorist attack case. And uh, we shut our doors on that, that yes, it's a terrorist attack case, not relevant to me. Let's go forward. But how many of you know this, that Kasab case was the first case in the history of Indian judiciary wherein the electronic evidence and especially the phone calls were considered as the primary evidence. 
it has never been done before and that was the first time it has done it was been done and uh, not not only that the person was not charged for the mass killing or the the, mass, uh, the massacre that he did uh, around uh, india in the gateway of india he, he was charged for entering the country illegally because there's no way he took a flight and went through the immigration saying that i'll see you soon he came from the waterways illegally he entered the territory of india then uh, he was also charged you know with a, with a very very small offense compared to what he did he was charged that he went to the the platform the local train uh, mumbai local platform without the platform ticket and then he was charged with the connection with the international terrorist group having a possession of arms and ammunition and then mass killing and so many other things right so national security ke upar uh, he was charged that you know threat to the national security and everything but now if you even look at it this is no longer just a terror attack, attack case yes it is about terrorist attack case that's the main part of it but then you look at it there are so many other things which were been discussed what are these these are the ratio of the case these are the law points these are the different different uh, things which were discussed in the case that he was charged on now these are called digest note head note ratio law points case notes whatever you want to call it now how does it help mr raina could you just say only digest notes now you see it is giving you our uh, rose versus uh, greater manchester police it's giving you uk let's take a uh, supreme court that's what i was thinking greater manchester kahan se aa gaya india mein so charanjit singh versus uh, state of uh, maharashtra now this is not a full court court 154 registration of fir preliminary inquiry and what in the reference to corruption has been discussed it's been highlighted over there anti corruption bureau so it is not something that is relevant to me it's not about corruption and i should not be wasting my time on this just because the word is coming over there i can see from the head note heading this is not relevant to me at all so right now let's go to the next one so it talks about prevention of corruption and then let's talk about criminal procedure court civil so person against whom pre fir inquiry is not is con, is being conducted and uh, will only be a certain whether a cognizable offense is okay uh, it's still not really uh, that relevant that i can see from this thing take the fourth one it is something relevant to uh, corruption but what i'm not looking at is the actual point of law now if you see all these uh, head notes that i just went through these are all from the same case but this point of law is talking about what is relevant to me criminal law public accountability vigilance prevention of corruption and then it says allegation of corrupt practice of accumulating assets disappropriate to known sources of income inquiries under para 14 and 15 scope and procedure and this is relevant to me now now if i start reading about it mr ana please scroll the third column i'm reading about it reading about it okay what is it been talked about in corruption respect to corruption okay read 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 more read now i have understood the entire keep keep going down keep going down this is just uh, uh, the head note the the concise information over is being discussed and also now if you see it's also giving you this is entire thing was discussed in para 14 and 15 then this was discussed in para 13 you keep scrolling down para 15 sub uh, point 1 and you go further down please go further down then para 15 point this and just go a bit up uh, mr ran is a told remark in this as well go a bit scroll up scroll up yeah yeah keep going keep going yeah there we go so this is on one point of law whatever was discussed in the entire judgment various sections has been brought in one place so you left the three initial points of law because that was not relevant to what of you, what you were trying to search for you went to the fifth one and you got the exact topic on corruption public vigilance and then you can about it and then it says all eight old remarks 
instruction to be followed by inquiry officer conducting an open inquiry under paragraph 15 of the Maharashtra State Anti Corruption and Prohibition of Intelligence Bureau Manual of Instructions. 968 has been explained in detail in para 18, which has not been repeated here to conserve space. So you can know that para 15 and para 18 of the particular, you know, um, instructions, you need to go through it and that's better understanding of it. You went through what is relevant to you in less than, I think, what, 15 minutes? If you read this, it will take maximum of 15 minutes. But compared to the full judgment, the judgment might be of, you know, a couple of hundred pages. You save that time and not only that, Mr. Anna, please keep on the please scrolling in the second column now. The seventh one is a, is a different judgment now. So you see if you click on the seventh one. It's a different judgment for you all together. It's a different judgments head note over here. You're not reading the full judgment again. You're reading the head notes of one judgment and not we don't stop over there. You're getting to know the head notes which are talking about corruption as a topic in the points of law. So you're going through tens of thousands of judgments and only the brief of them over here mentioned over here. And you can read about this. Please hold on, Mr. Rainer. Now let's let's assume for a moment that this is the exact judgment I'm looking for. It says this is the entire thing has been discussed on para 17 to 20 of this judgment. The question comes in that how can I see the judgment? Do I have to read, uh, note the party name? Do I have to note the citation and all? Not required. You click on the citation which is mentioned right uh, below this uh, para 17 and 20. You click on this, it will open the full judgment into a different window. So that's how simple it is. Okay. Let's close this. It's going to open up. Trust, take my words. Please close this. And let's go back to the word search. Now, how do we go back? We click on these nine dots on the top and we get to the back to the main. Uh, screen that we were on that is dashboards. Let's go to word search again. That's a one word search. Can I do searches with more than one word? Try those two words. We took corruption. So let's uh, move to the next example. Let's take I want the you know, let's take curse case of murder. Wherein the wife was murdered with a knife, right? The choice of weapon was knife. So what you can do is you can write three things. You can write murder, you can write space wife, and you can put a space and write knife. And you can start your search with it. Now you notice that I'm not writing full sentences. You just don't have to write full sentences. You have to, have to write main main words, and that will give you a better search. And there we are. Murder, wife, knife is all coming in the same point. And I can see through it. OK, let's go back. What if you are searching for two words, but those two words are actually one word? We all uh, understand the meaning of dowry. So Mr. Rainer, just write the word dowry. And write the second word death. The dowry individually has its own meaning. And so is death. But if you combine them together, it makes a different meaning altogether. So the question over here is that you have to ask, are you looking for dowry and then death happened? Ideally, you should be looking for dowry and death. So when you know that there's something which is a, uh, made up of two or three words, but it's actually one word, put, uh, put uh, double inverted commas around that word. So let me give you an, uh, let me give you an answer for that, uh, like uh, another example for that. Public interest litigation, motor accident, driving license, Suomoto, then uh, uh, child custody. There's so many words. Now, let me take the last example child custody. Now, if you search for child and you search for custody and you do not put double inverted commas, what's going to happen? It's going to search for child custody as one word. But also, I'm going to give you child individually and custody individually as well, which will give you the result, but will be few extra results which you do not want in the first place. So, suggestion comes in, put double weight commas, make it as one word, start search.
and now you see it. Dowdy that has been searched as one word, and let me show it to you on this screen itself. If we have something related to only Dowdy or death, Mr. Anna, uh, do you see anywhere Dowdy single word Dowdy written over here? No. Take the next one. So you can see it says soon before her death. And that was a good example. We can show it over there. Please scroll down. It says last line soon before her death. Now death is not being highlighted. That means death individually has not been searched. If it were not put in double inverted commas, you would search for both over here. Let's go back to the word search. Now these are simple, simple words. You can know double quotes. You write. You can write individual, individual words. But then, what if you have a sentence in your mind? Now, if you have a sentence in your mind, the better way of doing it is applying the same methodology. Write the individual words. Now, let me give you a bit of an intermediate search. You are looking for a judge, uh, uh, you know, a document or a judgment or an act which talks about that the court can a court convert or can the court has the right to convert a writ into an appeal or vice versa now you can write this into full sentence mr Anna, can you just write can a high court uh convert take this one take this one this is this, this one can a red petition be converted so this is a query and usually we write like this and i don't blame you this is how we've been you know conditioned by google and it works on google wonderfully it would can a red petition be converted to a statutory appeal by a high court do not write the full sentences. Why am I saying that? Because not everyone would write the same thing in the same way. What is that one thing that is that guarantee that you can guarantee that will be there in this document uh, when you talk about this meaning? One is red petition. Other one is a statutory appeal. I can I think I can just uh, go with appeal. That's good enough. And the third thing can be convert or converted. Or conversion. So Mr. Anna, remove everything and just take the important ones. Repetition, repetition is double quotes because they're two words. So we'll put double word commas around that. Because otherwise repetition would be, you know, individual words. I don't want that. Converted, we can take converted. We can take uh, appeal and high court. We can, I think we can remove that. By a high court, we can remove that. And uh, Remove the word converted and just take it convert. That'll be better. Uh, yes. Now what we can do is see when you write these things, you get suggestions. China, can you remove the T and put the T again? You can see it says it giving you same example, uh, same example that it give, uh, given earlier. The second option says convert or conversion and appeal near red petition, and then says convert appeal to red petition. Leave it. I can take these examples, but let's stick to our example, our choice of words. It says writ petition, convert appeal. I can start the search right now. It's there's nothing problem in it, but because I'm say I said it's a intermediate level of search. Let me tell you why am I saying that? I want to search for these words, but it will not make any sense to me if these words are not appearing in the same sentence, and they are not relevant to each other. They're not related to each other. If this first word is coming in the first paragraph, second one is coming in the second paragraph, it will not make sense. In order for my search to have a, you know, some meaningful results, it has to and has to have be in the discussed in the same sentence. How can I ensure that this two or three words are coming within a sentence? Now for that, I can write the word near in between. Mr. Raina. Repetition near convert near appeal. Now what does this mean? That it will find these things near each other. Now what does near um, business is all about? 
So you can see it says near means 10 words range. So it will find these three words in the proximity of 10 words. OK, it will not, not search beyond that uh, word proximity. So within 10 words, you'll search. You can increase or decrease it as well. If you want to make it like 20 or 15, you can also do that. Be my guest. But I would say 10 is good enough for this kind of search. I can decrease it as well, but let it be. And start search. Now you can see the first question. The first result that you see on the screen is inherent power of high court power to convert revision or repetition to appeal and vice versa. This is exactly what was my what was my question. And these questions are not that I just sit in the night and I make these examples. We take approximately I think on average we take three to four sessions every day. I'm not talking about myself only. We have a team of trainers. That's an average. That's an average. That's an average of uh, four sessions every day. And these sessions are sometimes with law students like you. Most of the time it is with the you know practicing advocates or judges of high courts, district courts, and sometimes uh, retired judges as well. Sometimes with law ministers and other people, law firm members, and they ask all these queries because these are practical queries of the world. So you will be searching for all these things. OK, now let's go back. We understood the word near. There's another thing which I would like to talk about that is not. Not is another operator, which means that you need to. Search. Something, but you do not want the second word. What is supposed to mean? It's supposed to mean that sometimes we understand that what we want, but we also understand what we do not want. Now, in those situa situations, you can simply write not in between. I gave you an example. Let's take a basic example again. I want the case of murder, right? I want the murder of wife. So I can write murder near wife. What I want, I can put that near. Uh, near uh, before that word. And but I do not want the murder was, you know, the choice of weapon in this kind of case was knife. So I can write not knife. So it's in simple words. What I want, I put near before that. What I do not want, I put a not before that. Right? And it's not a mandate that you have to use not only when you're using near. You can you only use you know, write murder, not knife, murder, not wife. So depending on what you need, you can do that. OK, so let's leave this. Let's move to the next search. We go back to the dashboard. And now we're going to go with uh, a more simpler search. That is words and phrases. What are words and phrases? This is your legal dictionary. You don't have to run to the library. Right now you can't because you're not in the campus. You can't refer to the Oxford, the Oxford dictionary because you know that's not something that would uh, you know help you in the long run. You cannot get access to Black Dictionary of Law because you don't have one in your in your in your in your in your uh, house. Some of you might have it, but it's a very rare sight to see a Black Dictionary of Law in the library of uh, of members. Especially if you are the first generation of lawyers, then certainly you will not have that. The question comes in that how can I get the definitions of particular words? So words and phrases will come in handy for you. The background of uh, this uh, database is we are getting definitions from any judgment which has wherein a judge has defined a particular meaning of a particular word that will come over here. Any bear act or there's a legal dictionary that is called as Wharton Dictionary of Law. We have included and converted that into a digital format, and that is uh, that's from where you can do the research. Let's start with a simple word that we all understand. That is bail. So write the word bail over here. And you see the first definition is coming from 
Let's scroll down. It's a long definition and it's, come, it's coming from Eka Gopal versus state of Madras. The second definition starting just after that is coming from another judgment. Women Gia, Women Narayan Gia versus state of Rajasthan. Third one, let's take that. Again, a judgment. But the fourth one, if you can see, it talks about what. Now, what is a what in dictionary of law? So you're getting definitions from various areas, and you can pick the definition and you can use these definitions. Why from judgments? Article 141 is your answer. Anything that is, like I said in the in the initial bit of the session, anything that there, anything that has been written in the co in the judgment, it is actually a law. So, so is the definition. Let's go further. Let's go back to the dashboard. Find my topic. I'm gonna just give you. Uh, I think I'm gonna leave it for this time, because for the first years this is not something that I would like to talk about. But for the senior batch, if anyone uh, insists, if anyone can tell me that how many senior students are there, I would like to talk about this. Let's move to the find by party name right now. In find a party name, like the name suggests, you have a party name with you, you search with that, and you get the judgment. But then sometimes you don't remember the party name, you remember the title which was given to that name. Like I was giving you an example of uh, Kasab case. Now Kasab was a party name. But I said in the first place was terrorist attack case, Mumbai terrorist attack. So if I have that kind of a title, I'll come to the search by famous case names. Uh, that's what Mr. Rana is writing, Mumbai terrorist attack. Take that, say find case. And there we go. Mohammed Ajmal Amir Kasab versus state of Maharashtra. The case is in front of you. So it'll basically decode the titles into the party name. So you can do that. But this is not why we are here. Let's go with the old school uh, methodology of searching. That is by select the quote and then going for your party name. So you select your quote. Is it a Supreme Court judgment or a High Court judgment? You can also go for all jurisdiction in case you are in a dilemma that I don't remember from which area this case uh, this, this case was decided in. You can take all jurisdiction. So let's take uh, Supreme Court because I know what I'm looking for. Mr. Raina, would you like to take this exa this case of um, mm, take a case of ADN Jabalpur? And start search. So it's very um, you know specific case. We open this one, double quote, uh, double click on this. Now, what I was saying earlier, you'll have a better understanding of that, and that is one judgment, several points of law discussed. So you can see there are 67 points of law which were discussed in this one, and one judgment, there it is. And the second column you see, it says J5, and then it says D5. Five being the common factor over here. So what does five mean? Five means the quorum strength. How many judges were part of the quorum? And J means it's a full judgment. And D means it's a digest note. So if you want to see the full judgment, you click on the full judgment. If you click on the digest note, you'll get the same digest note, which I'm sure you have already tasted the flavor of it in the previous example of corruption. But also, I would like to show one more thing. Mr. Anna, click on the fourth uh, point of law. You can see it says Justice Khanna gives you judge's name over here. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. So when you see judge's uh, name over here. So yes, Khanna was the only one who spoke on this point of law. Let's click on the fifth one. This one says just Chief Justice is uh, just Chief Justice Justice Ray name is available over here. Please scroll down. This is big opinion is given over here. This is Chandachur. Then who was just Bhagwati? OK, so and this is Khanna. So everyone out of five, all five of them author the judgment on this point of law. And what is the point? Constitution of India, Article 19, protection of certain rights, the seven freedom. 
was a point of law to discuss. What is happening is if this is the point of law that is relevant to you, you just got each and every judge's opinion, which otherwise you would have taken some time, probably a couple of hours, read everyone's point of view and then make your own head note and then come to a conclusion that who is agreeing, who is saying the same thing or not. It's a tedious task. I have been through that. I know it. But this is a better way on that point of law. Whatever that was being uh, discussed, everything comes in one place. But then let's go back to the judgment. Now, once you get to the judgment, you see it says on the top overruled in case put to Swami case. How do I figure out which in which you know on what con uh, in which context this particular case was overruled? First thing, a case is never overruled. You can only say a case is overruled when all the points of law by some judgment. Then you can simply say with full confidence that oh, this case is overruled, and you will not use it. So that way, be my guest, do it. But I beg to disagree on this part that this case entirely it was overruled. There are some only certain points of law which was overruled. And how do you figure that out? You can scroll down. The fifth point of law that I showed you had a red explanation mark. If I click on this, this red explanation mark so shows that this point of law has been overruled. Not the other ones. This point of law has been overruled. And if you scroll down at the end of this uh, third column, it'll also tell you. Uh, this was overruled on K with uh, from KS put to Sami case. OK, and the uh, and the easier way to see this, you can do a sub search. And how do you sub search? You see the SEC online logo on the top left. Just below that is an option. You write the word overruled. And whatever has been overruled in this case. You'll find it with just within one with one click. Now you can Go to anyone and say with full confidence, as uh, this 18 report case was not over of certain rights, talking about Constitution of India, Article 21, talking about the nature and scope in respect to Article 21, 359, and proclamation of something, and so on and so forth. You can simply go keep scrolling down, and wherever you see the red estimation mark, these are the points of law which are overruled. Others are still a good law. No other software in India is giving you this kind of a option. You have to come to this conclusion all by yourself. Let's go back to the, uh, the judgment. Oh, we already have a judgment on the screen. Now we see five names. Five names are in bold and in uh, in highlighted. That means whenever the names are highlighted, that means they are the one. Judges are the one who have authored the judgment. So in this case, all five are authors. So everyone names in bold and highlighted. The good part is I can click on anyone's name. And again, get to the start of their judgment. So let's do that. So let's just choose name, and I'm jump to the his part of the judgment. I don't know how, which power number is uh, is he sitting on, but I'm just in the middle of the uh, judgment. You can see from the 330 power number. And from here, you can if you want to copy something, you can copy it. In certain documents, you can highlight it, do a Control C, Control V, it will work. In some document, it will not work. In the documents, it will not work. What you need to do is you need to click on this clipboard icons. You click on these. Please scroll down. You've taken one paragraph, you've selected one paragraph to copy. You can take a couple of more, and then you go on the top. There's an option of smart paragraph that you just asked for and copy it into a different window with the cited. And from here, you can highlight whatever you need to highlight a control C, control V. You can email it to yourself or you can email it to someone else as well. Let's go back. What else can we do? We talked about case moment. Let's talk another part that you cannot access your library. So can I give you? Can I bring the library to you? Certainly, I've already done that. And how do we want to see? You want to see the actual print, how it was printed in the law reports. You can go to the print and a non-true print. You go for non-true print if you want the judgment copy how it is looking on the screen right now. Basically, internet print out. If you want the actual print, how it was printed in the law reports, the journals, you need to click on true prints. Once you do that, you select a page range, click on go print.
and you have the original printout in front of you. That's the way you can get access to all the judgments, original printouts without even going to the. The library. Yeah. So that being said. Let's move back and let's talk about case reference. Now case reference, like I said, it is a it is a feature which will let you know where all this case was being cited, referred, relied on, basically cited as a precedent. So you take your cursor over there, there's a case reference feature. You click one click on this and it'll show you all the judgments where in this case were being cited. So what happens? What are we doing? Why are we doing this? That's required because you are trying to find out similar judgments so that you can uh, have more judgments that you can cite. And that's why you're doing this. And you can see it. All judgments available over here. And like I was saying that a lot of uh, foreign court cases are foreign people jurisdiction are citing our case. Let me show you with an example, Mr. Rainer. Let's say let's say judgments plus sign. And you can see foreign cases. Can you see how which all courts are there? Malaysia and Pakistan have cited this judgment. So it depends. If you listen, if you go to a, a different judgment, it might give you some other, other jurisdiction documents as well. OK, now. Let's go back. Let's go to uh, the dashboards. And let's now go for find by citation. Now in fiber citation, you have a citation of AIR, DRJ, DLT, any local journal, but of obviously not any local journal. I mean, same uh, journals which have a high repute, which have been there in the business for a long time. We have taken the equivalent citations from there. So you can pick up any journals from the list. Once you select the list of uh, the journals from the list, you can then go for the citation over here. So now let's take a um, OK, let's take AIR. AIR Supreme Court and take 2010 SC1. And start search. Now you will get the access to the AIR uh, citation, but the document would be of SCC. This is just the equivalent citation available over here. And uh, let's have a look not only of AIR, but if you were to search from uh, ECR and AIC criminal law journal for that matter, you have still got the same judgment. So that's what the power of equivalent citation you know, uh, bring in with it. So that's citation search. Let's move to the next one. That is a more simpler search. That is find case law by section. Now case law by section means that you want to see a judgment on a particular section of a of an act. I'm sure every one of you uh, understand the contract act. That's the first thing that you will be reading. So I can do it. I can write contract act over here. Do not write the word Indian contract act. Just write the word contract act. Remove the word Indian from it. And you write contract act, start search. The list of the entire act comes over here. Now, the most common one act uh, section of this act is 17 number. That is fraud. I double click on this or I can click on go. I get all the judgments which have been decided on this section of the 17 of the contract act. Once you do that, you'll get information pouring in from all the areas. So you can see the Supreme Court judgments, they are high court judgments. If you click on the plus sign, and all of them are talking about the act which you requested in the first place. Yeah, so there we are. This is a simple way. You can pick up any act, any section, do the same uh, process, double click on that or click on go. You'll get the judgments pouring in right away. Before we get into the other segment, that is um, the browse part, I would like to show you one more thing. That is how you can make your own compendiums. I have taken some time um, of your life. I would like to reimburse the time at least in 10, 100 times more. And this particular feature will help you certainly to do that. Let's take, Mr. Ryan, let's take only judgments over here. I can save things on to my 
on my SCC online server. I can obviously download it. Downloading option is very easy. There's an option of download within a, in the extreme right corner. You click on that, it will get downloaded onto your machine. But it's no fun. If you download on your machine, you need to have your machine all the time. What if I give you a cloud space, a space on the cloud? Like, you know, you have Google Drive, you have other uh, iCloud and everything places where you can put your uh, data and you can access from any device anywhere in the part of the world, any part of the world. Something similar is been given over here. So you can, what you can do is you can click on this option of the folder. It says add to my system online folder. You click on that. You're saving this judgment specific. It says you want to save it to ALS folder. No, so change folder. And now we can add a new folder to it. You can say my folder, new folder. And you can rename it with anything. We're going to go with your university name, ICFI Hyderabad. And enter and select the folder. And the folder names appears over here. So say OK, and you're good to go. The next thing we can take another judgment. We can take two, three judgments and save it over there just to build up our example. Same method, same process. The only thing changes there over here is that now you have made the folder, you've set the folder, so you don't have to make a folder again and again. So you can make that, and we have set, I think we've added three judgments. That's good enough. Now, how do we access these uh, folders? Now, in order to access these folders, we go to these nine dots that we've been going uh, from starting. Next to that, there's another icon, which is a group of people sitting together. You click on there, you say view folder. Once you say view folder, it will open the folders in front of you. You go to your folder. By default, the last folder that you saved, that is ICFI, would be coming on the screen. So you don't have to worry about it. So these three judgments are from ICFI folder. And now what you can do is you can make a compendium out of it. How can you make a compendium? You can select the documents that you like. So I, let's say all three I wanted. And then you go to this uh, next option that is uh, next to the result list. And you go to the last option in this drop down. That says case compilation. One click on this. And just click on create. Your compendium is ready. The compendium will consist of two things. One, the index of all the documents that you have uh, you know, chosen to be a part of a compendium. And then the second one will give you the pagination done on each and every page. So the first document says table of content. The first document is of reliance, second of state of AP, third is uh, Bahurao. And page number is already mentioned over there. You can edit anything over here. There's not a compulsion that we cannot edit. You can write anything of your choice. So Mr. Ryan has written notes. You can write party name one, party name two, whatever that comes to your way. You want to add something in the in the, the document names. You can also do that. And then once you're done with that, you go to the next column, the next uh, you know section of this, that is pages, and you'll have all the pages number mentioned appearing on the top right hand side. Page number one, and you can simply go through. Now I understand that some of you would. The first year student would be like, why do we need this? See, the, there are a couple of reasons that you would need this. I'll give you one, uh, one simple reason right now. When you make your submissions uh, in the court and you write and you submit your, uh, uh, saying that this, these are things that you'll be citing in the courtroom, you have to make a compendium and submit it before the court. You cannot randomly just tell the court that, oh, I've given you five documents, the fifth number document. You're like, which is the fifth number document? You need to paginate everything and then have an index and then the, 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 the court will refer to it accordingly. This is the same thing what you will do for your, you know, for certain thesis. This is certain, the same thing we'll do for your mood code competitions. The same thing you'll do for e-filing of uh, cases in Supreme Court. Till time Supreme Court doesn't come in the full swing how it was working earlier. 
So e filing also requires this. So there are a lot of other reasons as well, and these are good enough reasons for you to start using these. Okay. So that's the research part. Now let's quickly get into the browse part. Now before we get into the browse part, anyone has any question around the search? We can take that question. Browse part is very easy, so I'm sure browse you will not have a lot of questions around that. Any question in the research bit? Any of the tiles that we've covered? Okay. Mr. Raina, would you like to take the browse part or should I carry on? Like I, I, I'll take the browse part. Not me. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Chetan. So, uh, uh, students, uh, uh, research part, the most important one, has been covered, fully covered. Now, coming to the my library section, which uh, um, basically uh, denotes that it's like your physical library that you have in your uh, university and college. Same way, we have a electronic library in the SCCR. And uh, what we have over here is um, topics. As you see, the titles, all of them have browse written over there, mentioned over there. So this is kind of uh, browsing through the indexes. And uh, the first top uh, option over here, browse curated topics, I'll start with. This curated topics uh, is um, uh, curated by our uh, editorial team and comprises of uh, major topics under law that is constitutional law, public law, corporate and commercial law, arbitration, taxation, etc. So if we select any specific uh, say topic, let's say corporate and commercial law under that uh, there will be titles available to us uh, in the form of, uh, say, uh, companies law or competition law. Or for that matter, you have insolvency and bankruptcy, you get cryptocurrency and uh, banking and finance, etc. So you can see the list over here, exhaustive list. And if we select any one of the topics, let's say competition law, under that you will see the, the topic tree, like uh, what all we have, you know, curated over here. That is the statutory law, the rules, regulations, notifications, case law, articles, all of them. But what is so special or different from what you do, uh, what you've already seen in the word search and all, because there it will search through the entire databases. Here, that searching and sorting and filtering has been already done by the editorial and all the end results are kept over here at one place. So in the statutory law, you will see uh, the principal act as competition act right here available to you. But apart this apart, you see real estate RERA one section 38 is there, then general insurance, then electricity act. There are four, five acts, five, six acts uh, sections uh, available. Uh, and then telecom uh, regulatory insurance act, insolvency, bankruptcy, a couple of them are there, motor vehicles and companies act. So these different different sections of these acts are also uh, related to competition law and they have been also placed here right here under the statutory law uh, title. Similarly rules and uh, notifications and as far as the case laws are concerned again you will get only select few uh, judgments on the competition law not the entire database since these are the hand-picked ones and the most important ones have been kept over here. A single click on the title will display in the next column the judgment or the notification as per your selection. So that is what the curated topic uh, is all about. Yes, of course, it will uh, uh, work as a quick reference for you whenever you want to quickly uh, you know, get some judgments or say sections related to that topic. Similarly, if I want to browse through the law reports that is by the publisher, maybe AIR, All India Cases or SCC and other journals, then you can use this option and you can also browse the judgments by courts, whether it's Supreme Court or High Court or tribunals. So all the uh, list is, listing is available year wise, month wise, date wise. I'll just leave this two for you to explore. Then coming to the browse acts and rules. Now here we have, apart from the central acts, we have the Constitution of India, we have state acts and notification circulars as well. But in central acts, there is something in addition to the bare act, what we have uh, provided. So if you see the list of all the acts, let me just choose one act, let's say contract act in this case. So you get to see the bare act right here. And beginning, I'll, I'm starting with the 
uh, first section here and there is uh, one uh, definition here applicability i mean these are all uh, commentaries as well as one citation reference right and similarly you will find under different different topics these blue colored highlighted lines these are all uh, add-ons add or extra information incorporated by our editorial and according to them uh, the most important uh, you know judgment on let's say gift in this case or wide contract the, this is the citation and the lines that you see these commentaries that you see they are also original part of the judgment the lines are from the, the same judgment over here so the most important citations on that subject under various various sections you will find this throughout in the entire central acts that we have incorporated apart from the barrack that we have and this entire barrack can be saved at one go mailed or printed right so that is the browse action rules part then we also have the articles browse articles so leading uh, law review journals uh, from 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 leading uh, you know national uh, uh, what to call law universities of repute and institutions so all the listing is there if you see you can just click and view but of course if you want if you have one specific topic in mind or you're looking for one say, let's say climate change i can also use a filter option here and this way it will just pull out the ones from different different institutes or the review journals the uh, the, the articles for me as from uh, this one is from dwrtc the other one is from environment law law and practice review and so on and so forth so you can read uh, you can go through these articles as well over here then in the secondary materials as we had told in the beginning shown in the beginning uh, that uh, it covers the the entire constitution uh, constant assembly debates it has got uh, various reports of commissions and committees so this part we have the bills in parliament the bills which are introduced and passed in both the houses those are all listed here then we have the entire constant assembly debates which form the you know what you call the plinth of your uh, uh, total uh, law uh, what we have the foundation stone you can say so the entire constituent assembly debates when it happened and uh, exactly uh, all the volumes which are available there from volume 1 to 12 these are all available here which all have with this all uh, debates happened uh, in, in for almost 3 years just under 3 years this all happened and then also we are providing you the index whereby you can uh, come to know while it was a draft what was the para number and finally when it shaped our final constitution when it was implemented the the uh, at that time the para number or the corresponding para number is also given over here so from draft to finality you get the conversion table and you also get to know the date of implementation date and year of implementation over here so this part we have the reports of various commissions and committees policy documents from various uh, government departments are also available and in here you will find the uh, law commission reports which i was talking about uh, this is pre independence as well as uh, the current ones the present ones which i think is still august 2018 the last report that was there so this all is available under your secondary materials then we have the brow, uh, treaties which are we have with the multilateral and the bilateral treaties with other countries those are there and as far as the moot court resources are concerned whenever you have any moot court competition you will be participating in there it will be a very useful resource for you these all information is not available in the open source i mean not any any google or something like that this is all uh, uh, data which we have received from all these uh, universities uh, who are our clients so we are sponsoring their moot courts for the last past one decade and therefore we are able to get this data and information which we are providing on our portal so this way it helps this resource helps all the students 
it oh, it gives you the problem which was there put there in the moot court and then finally subsequently the winning team memo for both the sides with the repellent or respondent so you can just uh, go through this you can study it and then prepare your moot court accordingly so this is more or less what we have in the browse uh, section now coming back to the software uh, you've already seen all the uh, options of searching whether it is by party name or by citation or by word search and subsequently you get the uh, results right here and at any point of given point of time on this say particular uh, let's say this screen now you are in and you have some doubt and you want to get kind of help here right here itself so for that purpose you can use this question mark over here which is known as help so you have various options here like in on this screen you have options like smart copy you have case reference etc so you can uh, you can uh, you know uh, avail this help option over here click on that and it will give you it will show you that uh, with an example illustrate this with an example whether it's a case reference or a smart copy or how to save and print and all that stuff now this part you have one uh, option view user manual which is universal in all the screens wherever you uh, you know use this help option and this user manual basically when i click on will open up a new uh, web page here you can see the frequently read articles how to you know use the case compilation how to log in through the ip or how to use the operators like near and not etc this apart you have other options browse the category wise you can as well and and one search option available on top where you can just type in the one word like uh, i'll take the example of this near operator i want to know more about it the moment i type it in it gives me an option suggestion so i click on that and immediately it will show me uh, it will illustrate that with an example the near operator and in the beginning uh, one participant had also uh, asked for uh, the recording of the session though i i told at that time that yes we will be providing some uh, you know webinars which are there uploaded on our youtube uh, channel so for that purpose you can just simply type webinar over here in the help uh, the search area and you can see the titles like advanced search how, how, how this about scc online folders and case compilation alternate search methods and all those these webinars we have uh, done uh, in the previous year uh, while the pandemic was at, at peak for uh, the, the the judiciary for law firms and other uh, you know uh, clients that we had some of these are there so if i click on any one of the title let's say uh, the advanced uh, so word search it will show it will give you the link right here on the bottom click on that and now open this one in in the in our youtube channel so these you can avail uh, in the form of you know video links or 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 the recordings you can see so i think uh, i have uh, yeah related browse and uh, uh, let uh, shall we take up to the open up the question and answer round i think let's do that i have not i have yeah. not heard a single question in throughout oh. the session so i am really eager i got yes. a few on the youtube but i think those are only you know the expectation that they have from the session but mm -hmm. nothing in respect to the question so i am really want to know if um, if there are actually no questions on from the session that's a bit surprise for me hmm that's surprising of course uh, from if we have ma'am over here on this call padmavati ma'am must be there ma'am you are there padmavati ma'am she was there but then uh, let me check what's the ma'am ma'am's full name Why Padmavati? Why is the first initial? Okay. Yes, she is here. She is there. Super. Okay. okay. Padmavati, ma'am. Yes. So we can just unmute, ma'am. So, uh, in the meantime, while ma'am yeah. is uh, coming in, uh, we have done the basics right now. We have touched the intermediate part of it. 
but there are still there are a lot of things that we'd like to uh, talk about. Mm. If anyone wants to do a comparison between, let's take uh, SEC Online and other regular soft softwares, I think we are open to that. If you want to do that, if there's something that you find in other legal research softwares and you say that, why well, don't find it over here? I'll tell you the way how you can do, how you can make use of it. If you want to do a comparison between the two softwares that they have this, they have this database, why don't you have it? Or what is that that you have it, they don't have it? We can get into all that uh, discussions. So anyone, uh, please, you can unmute your mic and uh, take this thing uh, further. Mr. Rana, I believe Hyderabad is uh, is a bit dull. No question. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call it a day. We can check with uh, Padmavati, ma'am, uh, once uh, if uh, this is what she wants. Then we can end this meeting and uh, uh, see what I'm we can sure. do in the next time if there's something is relevant. If something is more required, we can come back again. Yes, I yeah. think uh, the students are relatively new to this. Uh, legal research maybe that is why they are not uh, you know inquisitive enough right now no they because are they not they're just scared. you know guys <laughs> if you're if you're just thinking that oh this is so much that you have come your way let me tell you one thing 90 percent of the times you'll not be using any of these tiles you'll be only using word word search so just get your expertise on word search the first tile that we uh, talked about and just do your search and uh, the the overall part is another important part because you don't want to start your career or in the starting of the career you don't want to cite overall judgments in the courtroom and the judges looking at you that you know that's so amateurish to cite a whole point of law in, in his or her court there are two things that you can start off with and then browse is something that you can read information without you know even thinking of searching for anything. I think if you take these three things, you're good to go to start with this uh, legal research. Absolutely. Do not get intimidated. Do not get, do not run away from it because sooner or later you have to accept the fact you have to do legal research. So it's always better to start early because then you have doubts. You can, you will not have, you will not be hesitant to ask questions. But once you graduate, the people around you, if you ask them the question that, oh, how can I do this? How can I do this? It is sometimes gets a bit, you know, embarrassing. Your people would expect you to know it if you've done your law college to know how to do legal research. But yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Right, right, Chetan. So I think uh, if um, you have queries, doubts, coming up maybe after a day or so i am leaving uh, you with the uh, uh, our email id which is our uh, department email id which with which you can you know correspond with us with regard to any of the doubts or questions that you have in place and we also have mentioned about the toll free number uh, these are the two modes with which you can communicate with us anytime uh, with regard to the scc online software so uh, Padmavati ma'am, uh, if you are in uh, and with your permission, then we can uh, maybe conclude this session. Or let me just uh, call her separately. So, Mr. Anna, let's call it a day. We can end this uh, meeting now. Sir, I'm here. Ma yes, ma'am. Ah, okay, sir. Okay, ma'am.
ठीक है मैम विल एंड दिस राइट 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 चेतन यू आर राइट आई वाज जस्ट टॉकिंग टू हर ओनली अच्छा अच्छा ओके सो आई थॉट सो या थैंक यू थैंक यू ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स फॉर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू ऑल टेकिंग आवर टाइम एंड अटेंडिंग द सेशन बट यस वी लुक फॉरवर्ड with uh, all your queries and inquisitiveness uh, uh, next time around when we meet yeah. definitely have some questions guys it it, it yes. makes it makes the session more interactive otherwise uh, yes. you know can't see the fact that we are all online it doesn't seem yeah. like we are talking to anyone so we spent two hours you spent two hours you know it that what happened at that at your end we have no idea so it's always uh, you know it's always better on these meetings online meetings to have some interactions yes or no also works okay Correct. and uh, for the future like mr ryan has already put it in the chat you can go and you can write an email to us that is learning l e a r n i n g learning at the rate s c c s w c online.com okay we'll wait for your hearing from you and uh, all the best and thank you yes sir thank, thank you. you so much for thank you sir thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Padmati ma'am. Ketan sir and uh, Rajesh sir, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Padmati. Thank you to you, ma'am, for bringing everyone for together. For bringing everyone together, correct. Thank you. Take thank care, you. everyone. Have a great evening. Go ahead. Great All evening. Things. Good. Bye. I'll just end the meeting for all.